Well, hello, every folks, and good unusually early in the morning. So I'm pretty sure there's not even anybody here right now, or anybody even coming right now. So, such as to be expected, it is friggin' ungodly hour, and I really have not much else I can do while, uh, you know, half dead at what's basically 4 a.m. So, whatever, you know, why not? Let's go ahead and uh, do one of these here real quick. So, uh, yeah, long and short of it. Uh, last time, I uh, had gone ahead and... Uh, Done a quick run through uh, through Farampa, uh, killing just I would say barely made it through. It's more like we took four casualties, um, took a few injuries, but we got four people right out of it. So whatever, you know, even enough. <laughs> Actually, I think we even got more than that out of it. So uh, I think hmm, I don't know. I think as far as rules for this challenge go, like right now it's been interesting enough, just allowing free recruits like this. Just because they're risky, like with the mod, they're risky enough to recruit to where, you know, I feel it's relatively, uh, relatively fair. I mean, so far, you know, we've basically been going through with uh, chapter one equipment, and everything's been pretty well fine. Um, you know, casters and healers and stuff like that are kind of difficult to come by. Uh, but yeah, uh, but we've already got three fully equipped spell blades uh, with uh, heavy defensive sets, so you know, that's good. Now. Arguably, there's definitely better sets to use on Spellblades, specifically like a Sword and Board type build, or for that matter, honestly, just using them without a weapon and just using them as an item thrower, still reasonably effective. So we're doing Archaeopolis of Rhyme. Uh, i trying to think which one this is, because this, is, um, this one was on neutral, as I recall. So it's not going to be the um, not going to be the aerosol one. Uh, this is going to be post-attack, so this is probably going to be the one with... Um, uh, what's it? Uh, now, uh, Habram wouldn't be on this one, I don't think, because he shows up later if you go back to save Lenar. So, this should be the other one with uh, just the Dark Knights and stuff like that, so... Uh, actually, I think it's just the Bakram getting completely bailed on by the Dark Knights. So, uh, let's go ahead and use some that we haven't used in a minute. So, uh, yes, I mean, I was looking through and actually her setup's pretty good here. Uh, let's go get a couple archers in here. There we go. Uh, probably good with uh, two healers, I'd figure, for this one. Uh, gets Astina in here, gets... Um, probably want to get this uh, Dragoon trained up a little bit. I guess we're going to want one of our knights, so let's go ahead and put Voltaire in here, and... Hmm. Uh, I think we'll put, put Canopus in here. Uh, what's he running at this point? Uh, still Axe and Shortbow. Uh, he should be able to put on the Quirus. No, he's one level off on the Quirus. Uh, so yeah, actually anybody that I've that I've gotten deployed here should probably get a Quirus. Or at least anybody with a light build. Actually, uh, as a bit of an experimental thing, uh, I went ahead and uh, switched Fulkert over to a uh, light vest rather than heavy armor. So yeah, if if basically if you've never played you know One Vision before, uh, but you've played the original, this might seem like a really weird thing because looking at Fulkert, you'd think he'd be way better. Um, but uh, anyway... As you can see, his actual stats aren't that much different. He's a little bit faster right now, but that's because of the vest. So their speed, their base speed would be the same. Uh, his defense is a little higher because of the tower shield. His uh, his resistance is only slightly higher. I mean, in general, you can see the difference isn't too severe. Uh, the main the main benefit he's getting is that RT bonus off of, uh, going a little bit lighter um, on top of uh, the defense bonus from that shield. So either way, so I'm going to have Voltaire in there. It's not going to be enough to really make that big of a difference uh, between the two of them. Um, but here, uh, Celestra check down here. What's her deal? Thaddeus, uh, and what is your setup, lady? Okay, never mind. So you're going defensive. Okay, so defensive build on her. Um, a Gladius, that's fine. But inexplicably, the rapier is better. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I guess that makes sense. Uh, rapiers, uh, despite their overall portrayal in a lot of things, uh, that ex exceeds it. Um, yeah, whatever. That's fine then. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little bit more than brain dead right now. So, yeah, I think I slept a grand total of like two hours. <laughs> so whatever. Perfect time for strategery. Oh yeah, this is a uh, Gamp or not Gamp, but Japan, right? That's fine. Whatever. There's a lot of routes with a lot of fights. It's actually kind of funny that uh, every now and then 
get somebody, you know, go and talk to somebody. I'm like, oh, what happens at this and this and this? And then, like, I'll have to think about it for a sec. I'm like, I thought you played this crap almost 24-7. How do you not know? I'm like, dude, there's a lot to know here. <laughs> there is so much to know. Uh, it's like there's all of the ins and outs of the original, and then you have the mod coming in with all the, uh, all the extra stuff it brings. Like, dude... That is a lot of stuff to take in. Actually, it's been kind of nuts. Uh, so, uh, so recently, uh, there was uh, one of the one of the head guys for the uh, X Division mod. Uh, that it's basically a long war for uh, Xenonauts. Uh, but honestly, I think it's way more awesome than long war. But whatever, personal opinion. Like, oh, he won't make mistakes this time. Um, yeah, if it's gonna go like that, he probably won't. Okay, so I'm gonna stick Sestina over here in this alleyway. Anyway, so. What I was getting at. So he actually recently uh, started getting into one vision. I was like, yeah, there's not enough time in life to be able to do one vision and uh, uh, and X division at the same time, just because there's there's so much to to learn just on tactics ogre itself. And then you get the mod in there. All right, so I'm gonna go for these ones, hoping for a stun. Didn't get it, but that's fine. So he is pretty reasonably tanky, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume he's gonna be fine. Unfortunately. And unfortunately, that double rampart off those dragons is going to be a bit of an issue. So we're going to have to get our healers up there pretty darn quick. Breaking out the longbows, they're just going to be able to do plank damage for now. Now what I really want to do is probably get the archers in there to go take care of... Um, uh, go take care of some of their lighter elements, like their casters and things. Uh, the one in the back I'm not going to be able to get to, but I might be able to get Canopus around the side. Actually, let's see how... We'll Hang on, let me see how this runs real quick, if I get rid of that little blinky effect that always annoys people. Yeah, it's noticeably slower. I don't know why it does this, too. Like, the jacked up part about it is it gets slower. There we go. Now we're doing alright, now we're doing alright. So let's give it a second, let's see if it keeps this up. Like, if it keeps up this speed, that's fine. Uh, there will just be certain animations and things like that that it slows down on. Um, I should point out, as I always do, that this is just an emulation thing, so don't expect that that's anything with either version, uh, or any of the three versions, rather. Because, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, there's uh, three versions of this game. Uh, you got uh, this version, you got the Japanese version, and then you got the, um, uh, then you got the modded version, which, uh, yeah... Despite uh, what would normally be assumed under that circumstance, uh, the, um, the Japanese version, entirely different from the U.S. one. Bizarrely different, I'd say. Like, it's it's just strange how many different uh, different uh, bits they changed. Like, uh, from crafting rates to... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and just nuke this guy. Like, from crafting rates to, uh, to just overall uh, how the stats ended up going to... Um, uh, interestingly, they changed the positions of a few items for some reason, too. But, anyway. That's neither here nor there. Um, now we need stuff to be hitting, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw Faded Circle on these guys. Um, the Archer, it's not really needed, and you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that Simulate Block Transfer effect. Again, I don't know any more ideal ways of handling that. So, I've tried all kinds of different versions, like, you know... Maybe by some miracle, the newest version will be one that we'll be able to uh, to do all that without stuttering or blinking or whatever else. Uh, because I do run this on 1.54, and if you're if you're unfamiliar uh, with uh, PVS's PV in a nutshell, uh, it's kind of an odd situation with this thing. Um, because with the older versions, a lot of stuff ends up running overall cleaner. Like for example, the game may technically have fewer uh, visual bugs and that kind of thing. If I were to move up to, let's say, 1.61. Uh, however, uh, at the same time, it ends up looking weirdly washed out for some reason. Um, and I've, like, I've gone and I've adjusted all the different settings, and I can get it better, but it still looks just washed out, and I don't know why. But I, I, I just can't really deal with looking at it. <laughs> so, uh, so there's that. Now let's go ahead and uh, get him moving here. Now. Normally, I'd be really worried about wasting a Fern Bolas if I even have one. Uh, no, there's no Fern Bolas in here. Well, dang. Okay, so he can't move. He might be able to make some friends. Now, between the two of them, is this guy by any chance? Let's see. 
Guards you with cold eyes and is distant. Alright, sounds like he's gonna be our friend. Speaks openly and distaste of your decisions. Man, nobody likes a man. <laughs> poor guy, poor guy. So let's see, that'll get him down to... Let's see, to roughly 120. Should be at about 50%. If this hits, this will get him down still to about half health. So, yeah, this will be the way to go. Join us! Yes! Okay. So we got a new friend. So that should hopefully ease up that frontline situation a little bit. Hello there, Mr. Proko. Sleepy time? Yeah, I know. I know. It. My uh, my wife had a really early uh, work day today. And so, I, I anytime she gets up, I get up as well. And quite frankly, I sleep like a dang brick. So anytime that uh, the you know, the kids are around, and she's not up to wake me up just in case I don't, you know, actually wake up. Uh, generally speaking, I like to stay awake to make sure that everybody's taken care of and watched, and I can, you know, watch the monitors and all that. It's, uh, better, better safe than sorry, especially when they're sick. So, if I can get a little bit of this in, you know, get a little bit of stuff done early on. But yeah, but I wasn't exactly expecting anyone to show up to this kind of thing. I was uh, more so just kind of ran ranting on and talking to myself like a damn crazy person. Um, in hopes that maybe, just maybe, we're going to have one of them situations where video takes off for a little bit. We'll see. Anyway, so, uh, one section that I'll be adding to the guide whenever I have the chance to do so is going to be on skirmishers. Uh, because this is a type of unit that honestly does not get the kind of love it deserves uh, a lot of the time, I, I find. Because, uh, honestly, it's just not something... If somebody's coming from base game locked, it's something that honestly was not terribly useful. Although, interestingly enough, they have the systems in place. Like, originally, the way that Canopus comes in is as a skirmisher. Uh, so his original Barton class is based around that thing. So, if you're not familiar with the term, it's just a light unit that's made for harassment in a very specific way. So historically, it was usually somebody that was given like a light shield, some light armor, and their idea was like, okay, you run around to the flanks, you just basically out outmaneuver them, and then you start harassing them in such a way that it causes them to break formation, or it causes them to take some injuries, or something like that. Like they're there to distract, to just cause generalized chaos. So you may notice here, like he his whole thing, it's not super complicated, but all he's doing is he's sitting up there on top of that roof, and he's just harassing squishies. At the same time, he's got regen going, and on top of that, he's relatively quick. So he's able to recover uh, from several things. So, for example, if they shoot arrows at him, uh, he's got dodge, he's got he's got, got reasonably high evasion out of the box. Uh, plus he's got light armor, uh, plus the fact that he's got regen and sidestep uh, means that he's able to more or less just, uh, you know, ignore ranged fire, more or less. Again, tremendous shot and stuff like that, that will deal with him. Uh, but still, it allows him to uh, just kind of sit there, absorb a little bit of damage, you know, just be a little bit of an, a uh, ranged evasion tank and that kind of thing. So he helps out that way. Uh, and if the moment if the moment's needed, like for example, if uh, Scrooge here was to run low on health, I would keep him around, but I would rush him in at that point. Uh, basically, just having the option to more or less sacrifice him to save a more more, more important unit. That does put them in a risky position a lot of the time, <clears throat> but either way, it's uh, it's very useful to have that option, especially for this kind of challenge. But uh, yeah, anytime that I that I see folks coming in like, oh, Canopus is super weak, like, dude, he is really strong. You just gotta use him right. Skirmisher, look it up. <laughs> what they did, good stuff. They did. It's almost like. You know, when people were doing stuff historically, they weren't idiots or something. Alright. Uh, so, that first guy died. Hey, dude guy. How would you like to join us, too? Okay, he does not want to join us. Um, let's go ahead and block off his side, then. So, I'm going to block off his... Or rather, uh, cover his back. A uh, nice thing about Phalanx, even if you're surrounded, you can use it to slowly build a little wall around yourself. So, like, in this kind of situation, it winds, winds up being really useful. Alright, seems like we're going to need to be healing up Canopus a little bit. He's doing... Yeah, Scrooge is doing alright. Uh, he's set up with a full tank build, so I'm not too worried about him. Uh, it would take a lot to bring him down. So there's that. 
Yeah, they're kind of breaking through my front line here, though. That's a little bit of an issue yet. Ooh, okay. They're, they're getting to him. They're slowly but surely getting to him. If that poison hits, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. That's fine. You know, we can still deal with this. So I'm going to need to heal him up, but I'm going to move her out of the way so I can have somebody else put a uh, bit of bit of healing on Mr. Dude Guy over there. Okay. So she needs to take a step back, go ahead and wind shot this guy, or dead shot, whatever. Dead shot. And I think, yeah, no, let's go ahead and save that for now. But yeah, but yeah. So I will say on a bit of a weird random note, so recently, had finally achieved that whole status thing of like going and get, getting up to 50 peoples uh, on um, on this thingy here. So that basically means you're allowed to start monetizing it and things like that, which, on, you know, it's... I guess it's nice. It's not like it's going to be anything mind-blowing. But it's one of those things where it's just nice to have that as a motivator kind of thing. And there we go. Zapan just checkmated it himself because he cannot escape now. So true, we can't go and uh, save Denim, but that's fine. He's going to be fine as it is, but uh, Zapan is trapped, and he can't go anywhere. Right, let's go ahead and axe you, and go Hapungo, and he's good to go for now. Oh yeah, so anyway, so I was going through that thing. And um, yeah, it turns out it's weirdly complicated. Or rather, not so much complicated, more so just buggy. Um, for whatever reason was going through, and they ask you to fill out some tax forms and things like that, which, okay, you know, fair enough. For whatever reason, and I've tried this 20 plus times, you know, I've gone over it, over it, over it, and I'm wondering if anybody else has run into this glitch, but for whatever bizarre reason, um, there we go, let's do that, and recruit you. There's this weird situation where it will basically tell you that the, um, uh, that the address that you're using does not match. Despite the fact that, A, you can't actually change that address, so there's no way for it not to match. And B, uh, the fact that, um, well, they are the exact same address. Now, I thought it was some weird fiddliness with maybe some letter not being in the right place. So I literally just copied and pasted the exact same thing. And then I was wondering, because it said, like, address 1 and address 2, I thought, well, you know, maybe I need to just put the same thing in a different address line or something. So I did that. Still not it. So, no idea. No idea whatsoever. Now, we did lose Paige there. Uh, not worried about it. We should be alright. At this point, uh, I just need to get uh, Zapan surrounded and we're good to go. Actually, you know, we're gonna get uh, Paige out of here. We don't really need levels. And she's gonna die if I don't. But we don't really need levels on our archers, and I need that tile freed up. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that there. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to move her, actually. But we're going to have Sassina continue pelting over here. Oh, this isn't, you know, the most super ideal way to handle it, but I figured it's a little bit better than some other options. Go do that. Put down another Phalanx, and yeah, there we go. Trap him a little bit farther. Let's go ahead and pew-pew on this check a little bit more. There we go. Get a little bit more healing going. Good enough. This guy can continue stabbing this thing. As you can see, he's you know he's under leveled, he's under equipped, he's still using base gear and everything, and he's still doing all right. So that's why I'm not terribly worried. Now, uh, her situation is less than ideal, though. Uh, what do I want to do with her? So we can just do an ice brand for the sake of doing an ice brand. Okay, you know what? We can hurt this guy. Yeah, just a 20, but it's fine. She's really got nothing better to do this turn. So, by the way, out of a uh, random curiosity, um, given if there's uh, if there's time to do so, uh, what I what I wanted to do uh, schedule wise is to try to set up a kind of situation where, like for uh, for for this kind of thing, that I would be doing let's say one or two of each of the mainline runs per week, and then probably doing a, a couple of other ones. Like I wanted to start that RS run. Uh, that I was uh, that I was showing off earlier. So hopefully with a a bit less utter fuster fluckery going on because uh, it, I swear every time that I try to to go and start that you know, either one of those runs in any way shape or form it feels like something comes up. Like in that case, literally I just start it and all the kids just break break down completely into chaos. Like what happened? Everybody was fine. 
everything was all good. And then the children's exploded. Alright. So, let's go ahead and uh, probably heal up uh, Miss uh, Idiot Ball down here before she gets herself kidnapped in just a sec. Yes, 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 yes. And there we go. Despite being in basic equipment, he still is not able to one-shot that guy. Now, are you going to get poisoned? No. Knopus is injured, but... Or, might take an injury, but it's fine. Actually, I should probably check if he's uh, on his last life or not. What condition are you in? Uh, definitely probably shouldn't be risking it then. That's fine. Zapan is now moved out of the way. It's trapped a little bit farther. Mr. Voltaire, please get in there. How do you not have your finisher yet? There we go. And we're done here. And then Ryan gets invaded, and he's all like, check it out, here's this ice sword that I'm not going to use until you get in the post-game. That makes sense. Actually, that's one of those times that I really wish that the game would have possibly adjusted itself, even if it would have been utterly broken in vanilla. But uh, there's certain weapons that, you know, are basically each of the boss weapons. So, like, for example, it's Nefri for, um, or Nifrit in some of them, uh, for the sake of, uh, whatever his face is that I can't remember right now, the smarmy douchebag. And then you've got, like, the, the fire spear for the guy with the mustache. And yes, I am gonna just name them all by their traits, because I am, like, 99.9% .9 asleep, so, yeah. Anyway, do you want to overwrite this? Yes, I do. But before we... Oh, crap, right. Dang it. All right, retreat to Almorca. Everything went great. Nothing to worry about. At which point they're like, okay, let's go ahead and take over the castle, because that guy screwed up. Alright, so this fight can be fairly difficult. So because of the fact that I couldn't actually stop by a store to do some crafting, I can't do a couple of adjustments that I wanted to make. But here's the deal. Uh, we're going to do a bit of a riskier one. Uh, or rather, a, a bit of a safer one that may hopefully not be too risky. So we're going to have both the frontline knights. Uh, we're going to have... Uh, uh, we're definitely going to have both the healers. There, I mean, There's no question on that. But we need a really sturdy front line here. So, ideally, do I have either of these guys set up as a guardsman build? Uh, not really, but this guy might work. Do I have Vigorous on you? Oh, he just has Mighty Strike. He doesn't even have his weapon skill somehow. Uh, this guy just has daggers. Okay, so none of that's going to work. Okay, Eshiba, do you have Vigorous? Yes. So Eshiba's going to be our front line here. Um, in fact, can we get her that boulder friggin' awesomeness? Yes. So that guy with the boulder, congratulations, you don't have that anymore. You've lost it. So there we go. Let's get his equipment out of the way. Let's get her equipped. And, uh, you know, I was asked last time how the hell I keep track of all these guys. I just kind of keep in mind what everybody's kind of good at. So that's about it. So let's see, 10 evasion for the sake of, of yeah, we're losing 5 defense, losing 4, or 6 vitality. It's not ideal, but hopefully it'll work. So hopefully that'll be fine, she's got a ring of vigor anyway. Now, the reason that I want vigorous is to keep this frontline supported, so she's more or less going to be a diet swordmaster here. And on that note, we're actually going to want one of these swordmasters, I think Eva was the one I wanted. Uh, I should probably check what Wyman's skill set looks like. Uh, da -da -da, you have Harvest Dance, you have a Sorry. Okay. So, they have all of that, but she's the only one that has an actual weapon. So I could probably set him up as a dual single swords, actually. It's probably a good way to do it. There we are. So we're going to start working on him later. But for now, we need to get her going. Now, will this get better defense? No, it won't. So this is the best defense she can get for now. Uh, she's entirely here as a dancer. As weird as that sounds. And then on the sides, we're going to go ahead and have some of our fencers uh, working in here. Uh, let's see, she's good, but what kind of abilities are we looking at here? So she's just got Deadshot. He's got Purify and Aqua. Eric's not terribly useful, and Ancel is fine. So, uh, that was Bartholomew, right? So yeah, Bartholomew and Sestina, that's fine. So we've got these two up front. So three knights up front. They're going to be able to hold the front pretty well. 
Uh, she's going to be able to boost him with a dodge. Uh, these two will be able to work on squishies to distract healing. Uh, these two will be able to, to hopefully support the front uh, to keep them pushing forward, and then these will keep everybody else alive. Um, and, and then we'll have... Yeah, I, I was going to have a Swordmaster in here, but screw it. But this should be hopefully fine. Uh, because this this is easily one of those fights that can end the run. So there we go. Though I did have... I potentially did have a run end yesterday. So I'm still waiting for a vote on that one. Uh, personally, I don't think it should end there. Uh, if you didn't see it, uh, it's basically the OB64 run. Um, the deal was that I had said previously if there winds up being a situation where, where like, they get a technicality win, but it's, like, they would have easily lost. And, like, I, I was saying from the very beginning I probably won't count those, but, like I said, I'm, I'm just putting it up to a vote, seeing what other people think. Because there was this thing where it went disastrously right from the very start, and I managed to pull it back. Like, I, I managed to get everything that I needed uh, put together to win it. And I get to the very end. And I have two units, and they just need for the fight to last a certain amount of turns so that they can use an, an ability to end it. Uh, the first time that they're able to use the ability, uh, it works, but en it ends up hitting the wrong units, but it still ends up taking out one of the ones that I need it to. So, you know, all well and good there. So that ends up happening, and, um, you know, it, it seems fine. It seems fine. So... You know, they do that, then they end up losing one of their little extra grunts, which ultimately makes the fight last about a half second shorter. And that half second was the deciding factor, because they couldn't activate that ability. So I had another, um, I had another character fighting elsewhere, and I, you know, I dragged them over, and they were able to just outright win the fight. However, they were really far away. And apparently, uh, going in, uh, I had gone and uh, captured a town on the way over, uh, for the purpose of actually letting him heal up for a second. Unfortunately, that caused the AI to trigger, uh, so they decided to start attacking, and, well, there really wasn't anyone left to defend. Um, there were only a couple guys left. I basically went and blew the entire budget for um, for reviving the, the couple guys that were, you know, could potentially put up a fight. And and then, um, if I mean, was it a lucky crit or something that they ended up getting? It was something like that, like, where it was, it, it seemed like everything was going great, and then it just, like... It just fell apart. So, okay. So that didn't go ideally. But he's, you know, he still could win it. He still could easily win it. And, um... Yeah, it just came down to the fact that they were charging in. They dealt, like, I think 5 to 10 or something more damage. Which allowed them to very, very slightly... Like, it was a matter of a couple seconds, more or less. Uh, just, uh... They, they were able to get their guy to touch the HQ, which instantly ends it. Now... I mean, it's technically a loss, but considering that he was right about to win anyway, like it, it, I don't know, it just felt kind of sucky to have it end on a note like that. <laughs> That's specifically why I'd said several times, like, if this happens, just so you know, I don't think it should count, but whatever, you know, we'll, we'll see what people decide. So I'm going to put them like this. Um, I'm going to have these two spread out, so I'm going to have Voltaire go here, I'm going to have Fulford go here. I'm probably going to have Denim move up one time. Right now, I just want them to have good coverage with their uh, ramparts. And then the idea is we're just going to put two phalanxes here and here, and then ideally here and here to bolster it a little bit farther, uh, just, in just in case AoEs kick in. Uh, this will allow us to completely block off the bridge and prevent any movement whatsoever. Um, the only options they'll have at that point is to uh, move down this, this uh, path, which is why I have these specific tiles covered. Uh, so I can have Archer's Plank... Um, you know, they'll probably start moving their guys up. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. If they decide to go after my fencers off to the side, that'll give one potential option. But we'll see how this goes. See, the thing is, the thing is we got to deal with Zapan. Uh, once he's dealt with, he's by far the strongest hitter on their team. Uh, once he's dealt with, that'll end up opening up the options a little bit. But he's weak to casters, that's why they're off to the sides. So, you know, let's go ahead and open it up like this. Should be good, but as long as he's within range of the healers, there's very little that we can do. Especially with this equipment. So, what we're gonna do... Is, yeah, we're just gonna keep on healing here. 
We're actually going to forego a little bit of healing to drop some swiftness on these guys. Uh, specifically this one down here. Hopefully let him charge up a little bit faster. Uh, let's see, that's fine. Pop a little bit of help on you. There we go. Man, I'm sleepy. Okay, let's drop a vigorous attack on here. And if the opportunity presents itself, that's when I'm gonna go ahead and drop a recruit, and that should hopefully help stuff out. Now, for the sake of setting this up earlier, I'm gonna... Hmm. I was hoping he might do a little bit better than that. And he might be one tile too far up now, but we'll, we'll see if we can distract. So, again, using those guys to deal with the squishies on the side. So the rogue and the archers and all that kind of thing, hopefully we should be able to deal with them. Do I give up the middle? Okay. Let's go ahead and drop a phalanx over here, actually. And let's go ahead and hammer time this chick, I think. Perfect. And she's stunned. Alright, there's a reasonable chance of a recruit here, actually. No, there's not. Okay. Never mind on that. Dropping Aegis on you. And let's keep this going. So if we can make a wall, uh, that will allow them to come... Uh, that will allow a couple units to come through. While not allowing the ones that we don't want to come through. Uh, as long as we spread damage around, uh, it should be pretty possible to keep this under control. Yeah, I'm gonna have a munch on a leaf. I don't have too many of these. Again, they're the only... Um, they're likely gonna be one of the only uh, MP items I'm gonna be able to get. Uh, there are glass pumpkins later from um, a recruiting Cyclops, so I'm probably going to end up recruiting a lot of different Cyclops over the course of the run, uh, for the sake of getting the pumpkins. One of the nice little changes with the mod is, the, is uh, yeah, you, uh, you end up just recruiting Cyclops and you get, I think it was like 3 to 5 or something like that for your pumpkins. So A, way faster to get them if you're getting to Neb, and B, they're actually a reasonable amount. Like, I'm pretty sure in the original, nobody ever used them for their intended purpose, because why would you ever use such an annoying-to-get item for the, you know, for the sake of boosting MP a little bit? How's this gonna do? Why am I wasting my, uh, my time and money on this? <laughs> uh, anyway. So we're gonna keep pushing up here. Like I said, this will be a lot more controllable once, um, Zapan is gone. So, there we go. Let's get him fixed up a little bit. So the ideal here, because of the way that the AI likes to move around, uh, so most of those debuffs are likely going to end up going on my frontline knights. Not too worried about that. So what I want to do is have him repeatedly keep on pelting on Zapan, everybody else pelts on Squishies. Eventually this will create a situation where they're able to just break through. So, let's see. Ideally, what I want to do is block Zapan from running away. So this is going to leave our defenses open for a second. They won't be able to break through completely, but I want to prevent him from running. Because that's the scary part. If he decides to suddenly run away, he can kind of be a little bit screwed. So, can she hit her? Yes. Okay. Can you recruit her? This would be a miracle. No. Okay, so I'm going to have you just sit there, I guess. Well, if you won't join us, then don't fight us. Dang it. Okay, we're going to go for another recruit here. 2% chance, probably not going to happen. Whatever. She's gone. So that's one unit out of the way. Good. Hmm. Still enough damage. Not quite. If I move him forward, it's going to be a little bit too risky. So we got a dead anchor here. This will ruin somebody's invasion. Actually, what I want to do is snipe at this archer, I think. Or no, actually snipe at the mages. There we are, perfect. I'm doing a 90 on him. 
Hmm. They still didn't prioritize them for some reason. Probably just because of percentages. It's fine. Wait, why is your damage so much lower? Here, you've got longbow, you've got longbow. Why? And your dex is 80. I'm having a wizard as an archer or something, aren't I? Dex of 75. Uh, yeah, no, I know. Her, her dex should be alright. Let's see, leather and leather. Leather and leggings. Oh, okay, that's what it is. The uh, the gloves are boosting her attack. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And that right there might be perfect because they just boosted or they uh, went and altered his health to exactly just above half, so he probably won't get healed. But that's just about enough for the archers to finish him off. They're going for a Meteor, but now we should be able to AoE heal that right away. They go for a Mother's Blessing. And go ahead and AoE that crap. There we are. But yeah, if uh, anybody's ever wondered why it is that there's always healers in SRPGs, it's I think it's honestly less for overall balance and that kind of thing, but I'm... Honestly, I think it's more as a kind of stand-in for the fact um, that historically they always used to go and revolve their front lines. So I think it's just it, just the fact that it's always, you know, it's going to be difficult to implement that as an actual mechanic. That's probably why. So I'm going to have him go over here and purify. Uh, yeah, just do that. Go for a little bit of AoE heal here. They've got a... An extra, and he's got bridal. Fantastic. Just what I wanted. Okay. Back him a little bit. Go for a vigorous. These guys boosted up a little bit. Unfortunately, Volkert is completely blocked in now, so there's not too much I can do there. But what I can do is assist with this. So he can do that, he can Phalanx over here, ruin their movement even farther, so their healers are pretty well out of range at this point. Uh, she can probably go ahead and shank this chick. So if she goes down, this entire fight's won, by the way. Um, and then I'm going to drop Faded Circle here. I realize there probably would have been a better choice to drop that before launching the Spear Attack, but there is kind of a reason I'm doing that. Now that... Yeah, she's going to get healed up immediately afterwards. Do that. What else can we do here? Yeah, probably Aegis up Volkert, because we might end up having to leave him here. Flail. Where do we want to Phalanx? I think we're, I'm going to move him forward. Go ahead and Phalanx this off even farther. Um, but yeah, definitely have to keep those knights alive, because if they go down, all of their phalanxes go down with them. So we ended up, you know, we're getting there. This is, this is still getting set up here. It's okay, lucky dodge. It's good. Just gotta keep everybody alive. As long as everybody's good, good and alive and kicking, we're still in the game here. Okay, what are we looking at health-wise? Good, that caster is just about dead. And yes, Tremendous will do more than the finisher, in case you're wondering. There we go, pew pew. Lucky dodge, and now we can get rid of one of their casters. Probably shouldn't have left that up to chance. Yeah, if I put her here, that's just begging for an AoE. Okay, okay. So far, so good. Um, we need Ashiva up, but also Asha here is a bit low in health. And with archers, it's less that they're outright weak, and just more the fact that they have almost no health on them. Uh, that's currently their big uh, big drawback. All right, I'm gonna get him in here because he's not really doing much doing much good back there, and he can potentially put more pressure on his pen because he's gonna need to be using his spear pretty soon here. 
Uh, Ninja Guy is going to be something to worry about if he gets close to the casters, and he's going for Shadowbind instead, and he nailed a 13%. What a douchebag. Okay. It's fine. He can still be blocked off. They're stealing all our loots. Why are you stealing our loots? We have a healer coming up before Zapan. Mm, no, no, we don't. However, they probably won't be able to get one down here to help him either, so there we go. We'll do that. Re up Vigorous, because this guy needs it. Would be nice if you'd be able to use Recruit on him. Actually, that'd be kind of a neat touch. Like, if you could uh, use Recruit on guys that you technically can't recruit on that route through the story. That'd be nice to have, though I know it'll never happen. Simply would be too difficult to implement. Okay. So he can't do very much aside from using items. Uh, does anybody need some dodge? Or do I have something to get rid of slow by chance? Slow, 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 slow. No slow, go away. Okay. Um, reach. Feels like it could be really useful on Newt. There we go. We'll see how that goes. So healer's coming in. Still haven't completely blocked off this area, which we definitely need to do. Yeah, that's pretty noticeable. Please join us. Please, please, please. Thank you. Okay, so she's gonna go ahead and draw fire. <laughs> We basically just recruited a witch for the sake of uh, having her draw fire here, as you do. Now, no items do we have anything that might potentially help out Eshba down there? Probably not. Dead shot, yeah, just keep go for that. I don't think their other healer will be able to get to him at this point. If okay, faded circle on everybody for the sake of spreading out more stun. She's gonna go for another AoE. She does. we can go get Witchy back in the game here. Please don't kill Ashava. Good. He stumbled. That was just plain luck, but it'll work. It'll work. Dang well. She's back in the game. Let's see. He is looking a little worse for wear. But I don't want to see that ninja taking place here, so you go bye-bye. I guess you don't. And I'm Mr. Ninja Guy. Goodbye, Mr. Ninja Guy. Might be saying, hey, you know, they're not exactly overpowered anymore. They're all squishy now. Yes, but I don't want him getting that silence off on anyone. I don't really have the means to deal with that effectively. Okay, Dead Anchor. You can Dead Anchor somebody. Probably just go for her. Uh, she's surprisingly tanky for an old lady. Yep. Bye-bye, Newt. You did your job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alright, now what kind of dead anchor... There we go. That works out perfectly fine. Then he can't possibly dodge anything. Let's get that out of the way. Not to mention, hopefully, don't boost his TP any farther, because that crap is already way off there. Um, Aqua Blast, let's see, that does 37 to you, that does 63. Okay, you know, I might be able to finish him. Because he's going to leave, I, I believe he leaves at uh, 25%. If I'm not mistaken, I often am. Alright, how about you don't fearful impact? Whatever. Please crit. Aegis... Out great. Nothing else for him to do. Healer comes in, heals a pen, because these guys are pretty fast. Alrighty then. Gonna re up this? No, you can't. You want to phalanx her so she can't even move. Good, and then. Probably go try and stun this guy. Excellent. Excellent. 
Major heal. Get yourself majorly heal. Probably just move over here to ruin his movement a little bit. Mm. Deal with you. Probably move you over here and... Yeah, pop a little bit more healing on her. Good to go, good to go. This is reasonable. And just uh, tabula and those negative effects out of the way and we're good to go. Good to go, good to go, good to go, good to go, etc. I'm just gonna say that 50 trillion times, because why not? There we go. Do a little bit of the old casting. You do a little bit of the old getting more stuns flying around. And we're alright. No, we're doing alright. Uh, we've already taken taken out uh, both their casters, one of whom ended up joining us, so, you know, no complaints. So he's just gonna inflict a stagger, whatever. But he is gonna move over here and drop another Phalanx. And that wall is looking pretty ridiculous right there. Oh, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice right there. Ah, that delicious, surprisingly cold coffee. <laughs> She's gonna heal him. Hopefully nobody's paying too much attention to Zapan, which they don't seem to be. And thankfully, just luck is not on his side whatsoever. Plank a little bit. And how has that not expired yet? Oh boy. So yeah, Voltaire has been stuck bound to that spot for, what is it, like five turns now? I think it goes three to five. So he's, he's basically gotten the worst luck he can get out of that. Now let's go ahead and drop a Vigorous over here, I think. Go ahead and give these guys a little bit of help. And that's one of those reasons that I really, really, really like basic soldier units on this. Just because they end up... that buff right there keeps them really, really good. Actually, there was a comment that came in not that long ago, uh, where somebody was saying that, uh, you know, they could get through the entire game with uh, just uh, basic units and archers, which, uh, you know, I, I was actually discussing that with the uh, mod creator and all that, and you know, yes, that's, uh, that is intended, there's no issue with that, that's the point. All the classes are supposed to be even. You just get more options as you go along. I just want, like, originally, my first instinct every time that I hear a story like that, it's like, oh, you know, just go ahead and report it in just to make sure that there's nothing, you know, that went janky or something like that. Because at first I'd kind of misread what the guy had said. So what I thought he was saying, and what I was mistaken on, is uh, I thought that he was saying that he was able to go around one-shotting things all over the place. Uh, which, yeah, no, uh, basically turns out what it was. It wasn't that he was one-shotting, it was that he was, well, either getting close to it or something like that, using Mighty Strike on a heavy build, which is, yeah, exactly how that's supposed to work. So my bad for misreading it. But anyway, let's go ahead and try to recruit this guy, and nice. We are having a good, good friggin', uh, having some good luck with that. Okay, so either way, Japan's gone, this guy's gone, like, at this point, we've won. For all intents and purposes, this fight is won at this point. So if you've ever had an issue with this, if you ever came in utterly unprepared, there you go. And unfortunately, Mr. Silence Guy has gotten the, uh, he's gotten into our base! Got friggin' spies in the mother base, let's, uh, go ahead and shank that ninja. That, that lady is still a problem. Unfortunately, she will not change her mind about the whole fight thing till she inevitably croaks. But such is life, I suppose. Oh, dang well. And he is still stuck to the ground. Buddy, you want to maybe move or something? I'm just going to have him go chat up Cecina here, because it'll, uh, it'll boost his recruit skill a little bit. But, you know, there's really nothing he can do. He's literally just sitting and talking to himself, and there's nothing he can do. Um, but oh well. That will happen occasionally. I've never really seen anyone get so badly affected by, uh, by mind, but it will happen sometimes. Um, I wanna s I don't think there's any special effects attached to the ninja's, uh, shadow bind. Because, uh, bear in mind that, uh, they are very, very, very reliant on a lot of their abilities now. 
So, for example, if they go in and both their attacks are blocked, and like let's say they're using a sleep bomb and that fails, they got nothing. <laughs> they rely on being able to run in, ambush, and hopefully shut down whatever they were attacking. Like usually the odds are about 60% or so at best. So if they they're they're a pretty extreme gambling unit. So if they fail, they're screwed. Like they have no answer as far as direct fighting goes. Um. Like, if you get their skills high enough, maybe they can pull something off. But in general, just as a general rule, yeah, no. Somebody sitting with, like, just wearing a vest with two knives, they ain't gonna be doing very much. Though they, they did recently gain access to one type of shield, at least. So they get access to parrying daggers now. Um, let's get Eshiva up here, have her do her buff. What I'd like to do is actually recruit this ninja if I could. Now we can get a little bit more experience out of him. Pew pew. Like you can see right there, even even with all their light armor and everything else, it's just e <laughs> an archer will still be able to peg them pretty easily. All right, so that that knight up there, she can't do anything. She is literally unable to do a single dang thing, which I've got no problem with. You want to join us, buddy? You seem pretty uncomfortable with your current job. Fantastic. Shock Lance, that's fine. Hmm. 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 And let's go ahead and Aegis you. He's about to be gone. Uh, if I sneak him around the side, there might be a way to do this. Oh, and he even comes in with Tyrannico. Fantastic. Yeah, when do... Oh man, he comes in with a lot, with all the goodies. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm actually gonna bring him over here because I want to play it safe for the moment. So basically, what I want done, I'm gonna try to push everybody through this little gap right here. They got healers coming up. They sure do. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Start poking away at this guy. Oh, is Voltaire about to get a turn? Holy crap, Voltaire can actually move. It's like some kind of Christmas miracle. Okay. 22%. Do it. Dang it. He did rank up, though, so that's nice. So if we do that... So go for the recruit, probably tear down our own walls. That would be pretty nifty. Go ahead and uh, throw a little bit of a uh, speed up on Mr. Robert here. And uh, there we go. Yeah, so... Well, once you end up getting them to some higher levels, actually one of the cool things that ninjas can do at this point is they can actually double up their movement, uh, which, I mean, I guess they were able to do that as of, I want to say, October of last year? I don't know, something like that. This this whole last year has gone surprisingly quick, I have to say. Like, I, I think it was June of... I think it was June of uh, 20, uh, 2017 when I started, uh, when I started with the One Vision, something like that. I don't know, it's just flown by. It's weird, because it feels like it's been a day, but it also feels like it's been a minute. It, it's it's kind of crazy. And that's the thing. Like, folks often wonder, like, why exactly am I going and, you know, chilling so hard for uh, for a mod all the time? Like, dude, it's really good! You can play something for a year straight and still, you know, still friggin' love it. That's a sign of some quality right there. Stuff went good. <laughs> he did a good thing. Alright, let's go ahead and Nightblade this guy. Just put him to sleep. Good. Uh, Eshiva, let's have you go tear down some thingies. Get this out of the way. Because we just need to charge them at this point. Not completely charge, mind you. Uh, we only need a couple barricades out of the way, Get a, just so we can get more damage in. Let's go over here. That's done. And who needs an Aegis? Probably Ashiba. Yep, boosted. Just as long as everybody's supporting each other, this game works out pretty well. He's just going for a recruit for the hell of it. Right. Okay. The poison hits like a truck, as you'd expect. Now, 
more than likely we won't be making very much progress until we can get back there and deal with one of those healers. Uh, that's just one of the things that happens with this map, or uh, with this fight in particular. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to have her, I'm going to have both defensors circle around the left here. It's looking pretty weak down there. Hopefully with that much, Voltaire might be able to convince this guy to join. Okay, 13, it still sucks, but try it. Let's go back uh, to convince him to move forward a little bit. That's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. I thought you might be dodging a little bit better than that. Thank you, Newt. You are a friggin' hero. Good dang job. Okay, so we lost Sarah. Is she on her last life? No. So we're not gonna bother saving her. I I'm going and saving those gems up until somebody's on their very, very last life, because there's really no sense to do it otherwise. I mean, I realize the overall potential there would be like, okay, if they you know, if they run into some kind of position where, uh, like, let's say they, you know, they absolutely, you know, they can't be saved whatsoever, you know, that there's absolutely nothing you can do, it would be nice to have some lives to save for them there. But I've got a lot of units, so even though I'm forbidding the use of, uh, Know, silver transfers and things like that, I'm still, you know, pretty sure we're going to have enough stuff to make things happen. Alright, here's what we're going to do. We need to cause a little bit of generalized chaos with this guy, so... First off, what do your swords look like against... Oh, wow, actually, that's really good. Never mind. Just do that. <laughs> that works out just fine. You go ahead and sit there. It's way better damage than I would have expected, actually. I would have expected, like, maybe 20-20. But instead, we're getting 30-30. And it's pretty alright. Oh, sorry if that noise carried through. Next time, I'm just uh, smack myself with some random objects. As you do. Christina still doesn't want to join. Okay, that. Good. That's distracting their healers. They're getting a little bit closer. Uh, we're down to one archer. Uh, she got the 40% shackle. Fortunate, but still manageable. So at this point, we're getting to where we're able to, you know, keep on laying on consistent damage, and they can't heal it fast enough. Uh, that's really why you want that guy out of the way. So I'm able to use regen to keep healing going in a lot of places. They only have one character right now that's able to do enough damage to like, fully lay on pressure. Uh, so their archers are plinky, their healers aren't doing much attacking, and they've got. You know, a few other lightweights from there on. Uh, they've got this guy. Um, technically a heavyweight, but he's running a light build. We've got this one as a, as a heavy down here. Uh, this guy as a spell blade over here. So those two, reasonably okay hitters. Same with uh, this guy. Eh, she doesn't seem to be doing very much at all. But whatever. Uh, the knights are just there for defense. So overall, you know, I think we're doing pretty all right. Um, I think let's start working on this. Stab this guy. And I'm going to move her back because I need her to get healed. Perfect. Nice double miss. Please get us a birdie. I want a pet birdie. And if you can't get a birdie, go ahead and drop an Aegis. There you go. Done deal. Also, I find it a little bit hilarious that uh, there seems to be either one one person coming and going, or just like a few people coming and going repeatedly. Like, what is a Scrooge run? And then nobody ever asks. There's like, hmm, I don't understand. Okay, bye. Ah, <laughs> uh, why not? Why not? And to be fair, it's kind of a hard run to explain. I don't know how to set up a, uh, you know how you do the thing where it's like, oh, you just put exclamation mark rules or something, and then you tell that to every single person that comes by? But A, nobody ever asks, and honestly, it's just as easy for me just to tell them what it does. And uh, B, you know, it's, I you know what, I shouldn't have done that, actually. That's fine. Go ahead, double sword this guy, and put him to sleep. Excellent. That is the ideal ninja type situation. They get up to somebody, shank them, knock them out. If they don't pull that off, they're a little bit screwed. What was I getting out of here? Oh yeah, so 
yeah, as far as the run goes, it's just a weird one to explain. But yeah, nobody ever asks, and I don't know how to set up those exclamation marks, so whatever. That's just not a thing that's there. Okay, Chicky is still shackled, but that doesn't mean she can't get all vigorous. There we go. Give everybody them buffs. I love that buff so much. It's basically like a more TP expensive, less, um... I guess less time intensive? Not really. It, it's basically just like the one the Swordmaster gets, just a little bit different. Alright, nothing too much for him to do. Ah, uh, let's get you pew pewing this guy. Then somebody else can walk in and finish him off, hopefully. Perfect. So far, so we're right. Mr. Denam, how about you go over here? Smack. And probably Aegis on Fulgert. There we go, he needs it more than anyone else. Alright. Now, one last chance to join us, buddy. Come on. 22%. You know you won't do it. Oh. Oh, they took away my birdie. Alright, so he can't... But you know what? The ninja can finish him off. So, whatever. She's just gonna move on then. Hopefully gonna still be within range of uh, the healers. Alright, so because of how the overall dynamic of this thing has changed, I'm actually gonna focus less on dealing with this knight. I was gonna focus more on that in just a little bit. But I want uh, Sustina to be healed. Uh, right now, since they decided to move their bird and TK forward, she moved over here to block him from running away, because there shouldn't be... Well, I mean, I guess technically he can run by, but it's still one extra tile of movement for him. The birdie just moved in, so screw it, he's just going to eat it. So that's all taken care of. Um, on the right, we've got that TK going to sleep and being put back down repeatedly. That's fine. He's doing pretty good as a healing lightning rod, so we'll do it that way. That's all good there. I guess you only need one for this. Go get that done. There's a death card. He's familiar with these. Let's see if it ruins his luck completely, and it sure does. Nifty. So if you happen to have seen, what was it? Uh, that there was a, a couple of uh, a couple of things I put out for the uh, Lord builds recently, and uh, one of them is a really bizarre build that ends up uh, abusing the way that luck works in this game. <laughs> because if if you didn't know, um, you basically have a you know, a, a semi-hidden Lux course. Like, for example, it, it's kind of vague. If I go down here, I go to this. Like, okay, so he's got six. I believe uh, six is normal. I think ten is the highest you can get. Uh, just because I, I think it's actually on a scale of one to a hundred. So let's say, let's assume that's correct. And so this is, uh, like, let's say this is 60. So then, yeah, that if you use a, a, a Band of Fortune, it ends up boosting it by 40. And if you end up using a uh, katana, it ends up boosting it by 20. However, if you use a um, if you use a side graded katana, it actually lowers it by 20, but it but gives you plus one parry. So there's a build that you can put together that gives you a rank 12 parry. So that's a 60% chance to save any melee hit that would have hit anyway. And then you just combine that with like every other piece that will boost luck. So you'll have a situation where you have somebody that's able to pretty much max out evade, plus has absurdly high parry, plus has unreasonably high luck to the point where it's almost maxed out. So even when they end up uh, getting hit, like I, I literally saw the thing roll 4% multiple times in a row. <laughs> it's not cons like super consistent or anything, because obviously it's luck, you know, it's never going to be super consistent, but it's just, it completely messes with the RNG in some pretty hilarious ways. So I think, rather than anything else, I'm just going to put this check in a box and call it a day. Um, it just feels like it's the more effective way of doing this, especially since all these shackles and binds and everything else seem to be lasting forever. Um, it does not seem to be a good day as far as those are concerned. Uh, by the way, uh, when those when those go, I forget exactly how it goes. Like, uh, in terms of how much it can vary or whatever else, but it basically just puts a timer on them. So instead of like, oh, it'll last this many number of rounds, uh, it's just like it'll cost you this much RT to recover out of the status effect. So I don't know how much the variables can be, 
but uh, it, it generally feels like three to five rounds for some of the more intense ones. Oh, that's funny. He wants to be rewarded. Yeah, I mean, we'll give you like a cookie or something. Honestly, we don't really have that much. Yeah, apparently forgot that Scourge refuses to even equip his units, so there's that. Sarah's taken more injury. Such is life. Actually, you know what would be really cool? And this may seem like a weird thing, but my personal like wish for the uh, the permadeath mechanic in this is like with a timer, that the timer is just however many hearts they have. And then, like, say it counts down one day into losing a heart, and then the next time they get knocked down, they only have two hearts or something. Or if the number of hearts they had actually determined how long their countdown time was. Like, I wish that that was a thing, because that's... Oh, man, that sounds amazing. I know, it seems weird to be wishing, wishing for something so masochistic, but... I don't know, I just feel like it would really help with immersion. And that's basically what this mod's all about, so... Anyway, so we lost our second archer, but no big deal. We've got plenty more in the basement. <clears throat> Wait, sorry for the hiccup. Happens sometimes. Please poison. Dang it. Alright, whatever. Uh, can you finish off this guy, please? Yes, you sure can! And this is why a team of two fencers is very effective. So specifically, uh, heavy spear fencers are just very, very good. I, and again, I just want to point out, yes, they are called spell blades in this. I just like calling them fencers. It's just a personal preference. Okay, smack. Run over here. Put in box, and we don't have to deal with that knight ever again. There's nothing she can do aside from providing aegises every four turns, so... Who cares? I think who cares. <laughs> We are doing that. This is a different party. I think this is a different party. Man, everything is blurry. Yeah, I should probably get him healed up by this point. He's been tanking for a long time. But yeah, if anybody is wondering what the point of this run is. I just want to point out that this game can be fully beaten in, like, the worst friggin' conditions. That's, like, I love doing challenge runs as a personal thing. It's something I've always loved since I was a kid. It's one of my favorite hobbies. But, uh, then, like, every time somebody comes up with something like, Oh, man, it's too difficult. I can't do this or this or this. I'm like, yes. I'm going to go ahead and, like, double up on that, and we're going to make a run out of that. <laughs> it's not to be a douche. It's just, like, just more of a challenge accepted kind of thing. But, uh, anyway, anyway. I just, uh, thought I'd mention it. Because, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes you will see situations where somebody's like, okay, no, I, no, just specifically need to prove everybody wrong. Like, it's just for fun. <laughs> this crappy is fun. Alright, you go ahead and purify Sustina. That sounds weirdly misogynistic. And we're gonna go here. All right, and they brought in a new guy. See, with the way that stuff's balanced out right now, uh, I have to say it feels really, really satisfying to do it this way. Like the fact that uh, the fact that the um, uh, reinforcements that come in, they're set to go in a, at a specific interval, and it matches this so much better than it does the original. Like, I know that seems like a weird thing to say, but it's just, it, it really does. Like, you can see, they're, they're trickling in units, but in the original it never mattered. Because by this point, you would have probably shot two arrows at Zapan and the, heal and the uh, not the healer, but the main caster. That's it. That's all it took. If you had archers, two shots, done. So how is she still disabled? She's an unusually long time. Oh well, moving on. Upwards and onwards and so on. Stumble. That probably would have bounced off the wall anyway. But so, uh, anyway. What, what I was getting at here. Is, uh, yeah, by this point the fight would have been long over. I mean, it's just... Like I was saying, two shots and that's it. So not really a whole lot of actual strategizing going on. It's just like, hey, did, did you figure out ranged attacks are OP as hell? Yes? Okay, good. You're done then. 
you've won the game. <laughs> Good job. Actually, I, I saw a discussion come up uh, just recently. Uh, there was there was kind of going over some of um, some of the weird metas in the original, like the fact that once you ended up uh, uh, once you ended up maxing out all your base stats and stuff like that, there was never ever a reason to wear armor ever again, just because your vitality and everything else covered you way more than anything else could, and the fact that it slowed you down was you know kind of ridiculous. So you were usually folks were just running around with you know. Like, just bows and scrolls and completely naked aside from their specialized earring and stuff like that at that point. And, uh, and yeah, really awkward metagame. Like, personally, I like to see it as if, if you were to you know, see the best out of it. It's like, oh, you know, it's a whole meta commentary thing where, you know, they're like, okay, you know, warfare evolved and it created this whole situation where, you know, everybody's just running around with, you know, guns and lighter armor and you know, all of that kind of thing. Everyone's just ranged units now. What happened to wars or whatever? It's like, no. That, that's probably the best way to see it. More than likely, they just didn't really know how to, how to balance it at that point. It, frankly, everything post-game was not... It, the game was not designed for it. Like, I don't know the full development cycle, and I'm pretty sure that I'll never be able to get an accurate answer on this. But it's one of those things that bugged me for the longest time. Uh, which was just, uh, you know, what exactly happened uh, when it came to Coda and things like that. And simply put, the game was... The original version did not have all of that. So, you know, no Coda, no Azelston, none of that. So, you know, it ended up getting all of your skills up way faster. Or, not skills, but ended up getting all your, um... Ah, man. Definitely shouldn't be doing these at 4 a.m., uh, what's it? Ended up getting all of your uh, base stats up way, way higher, so your characters ended up getting maxed out way earlier, and that was the thing. You were supposed to get more or less maxed out. You know, you got to the point where everything was all crazy and fast and everything, and just like the original, it was like the SNES game, uh, and PS1, uh, you wound up with a situation where everyone just has their weapon, um, whatever their preference is, and every weapon could do a fair bit of damage. Like, you could do a pretty punishing amount of damage with anything that you chose. And then from there, you know, you would just carry whatever you preferred. Uh, you would have whatever bonus items you wanted. And then just go for weird effects. Like, for example, you have all of your fancy floating rings. And you may have wondered what the hell the point is, considering their stats absolutely suck. And it was one of those cases where it's like, no, it's just, it's a light thing. You don't need your uh, stats anymore. So you just need your skills, and you just need your special effects, so having a ring that lets you fly, suddenly it's a, you know, a lot more useful. Suddenly it's actually something that you may want to consider, rather than, you know, like, okay, I haven't gone through the rec you know, prerequisite dozen classes for this character going from level 1 to 50 to max them out in order to make that equipment worthwhile, but even then you were better off with an earring or something like that, because you're more likely to get uh, those way before anything else, so... Anyway, I know, long rant, but still. It's more or less what happened here. Now, I'm putting Sestina in a weird spot. This is on purpose. Because I'm thinking, yeah, there we go. Good. So she was targeted. That's what I wanted to see. Now, can we recruit this guy by any chance? Please do. 35%, that's not bad. Dang it. I wanted new friends. But I didn't get new friends. Might have endangered Sistina for no reason, but we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Okay. Now, next up, I'm gonna need you to go poison this chick. Failed. Dare you. Anyway, that's fine. So they're doing all that, they're healing the wrong units. As long as our other healer doesn't heal that one guy on the left, we should be okay. Alright, that's a problem. We have now run into problems. It's not unwinnable by any means, but still, problematic. And breaking through these tanks is going to be a little bit of a thing. Get a 114 on that guy, or a 114 on him. He might be able to be finished off with a recruit, so... Let's go Sonic on you. Do, 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 do. 
don't think there's any way for her to get in range to help Sestina out. I don't think they have any way of attacking her either. At least not immediately. That bird might be able to do something, but I think her partner might be able to save her before then. Let's go over here. Yeah, so he's going to be able to save her. That'll buy her a little bit more time. Uh, the only one that should be able to... Hmm. I don't want to say for sure. Because I don't know... Uh... Is this guy running a spear build or no? Okay, he might be able to do something. Ah... <sighs> Okay. You know what? Screw it. Just box in. Uh, no. Right. Right, right, right. They can't even use that. Um, it's... It's time to just start charging, I think. I'm gonna go get everybody that's left, bring them around to the sides, and leave these tanks behind. Okay, Sustina just barely survives. I really wish you wouldn't have done that. I don't need that guy for stuff. Unfortunate. Yeah. Definitely unfortunate. Okay, can I have a turn now? That'd be great. <laughs> uh, they're just stacking up all their turns. Okay. Here's what do, though. You can't exactly heal if you're asleep now, can you? Wham! Now he's one attack possible from here, the archer will hit him anyway. Healers may be able to run up and get a little bit of support. Let's have Denim doing his thing, so you're going to run out here and start running around the side. Like I said, tanks are just getting left behind. I may use, like, let's say, Fulker and stuff like that to block off the sides so they can't pursue. Uh, right flank isn't very likely to do that, though. Okay, just Eshiva, because she's more likely to actually accomplish something here. So we need to get to those friggin' healers. That's the problem here. Since they took out one of ours, we need to go take out both of theirs. Eye for an eye and all that. We'll get there, we'll get there. It's gonna take a second. Okay, yeah, Tabula, you. Think about what condition is Sestina in? She's perfectly fine. Okay, okay, that's fine. I go this way. And now you need to start laying pressure on these healers. Thankfully, Bartholomew can actually keep himself healed up. He is currently our best. Uh, Nah, you're fine. You you didn't take up any swords at all. Please miss. Yep. Please miss. Oh, come on with your really low percentage hits, lady. Ah, this lady's hit like, what, 40, 40, and 55? It just apparently does not care about odds too much. It's fine. One of them hit. Please go to sleep now. Thank you. And we've got a chance. Um, I don't really have anyone in position to punish that. Especially since I moved Denim wrong. Okay, whatever. Drop a... No, we have no more room for phalanxes, so you just go there. These heavies are going to take a really long time to get around. Hmm. Yeah, Aegis, you... And I'm gonna just get you out of the way because I want Ashiba to go in there and probably finish that guy off. Since we're not getting very many finishing off opportunities, he's gonna. What? I thought he was gonna finish off the ninja. Okay. Finish him. Make us a little bit of an opening. A little vigorous on everybody else. And our dodge and true strike. Yeah, the Swordmaster one is better, but dodge and true strike is still pretty strong. We'll continue area healing. Alright, we've got this. I think we've got this. 
Because then I'm safe. Um, ninja guy, not in such a good position. Yeah, he blocks. He might be able to recover anyway. No, he died. <laughs> oh well. Oh, come on, lady! Yeah, that lady still hits like a truck. No matter what version you play, that lady is just crazy strong. Actually, it's kind of amazing she isn't more of a character because, dude... Lady, why you hit so dang hard? Alright, so he's got his TP up. What I want is for all of the knights to move in with all of their finishers, uh, completely surround her. For now, the healers are down on the ground, so I can have everybody move in. You know what? He's going for a sword setup, so... Let's start laying some damage on her. Aside, if we end up getting through this, we'll actually have the option to uh, maybe do a little bit of crafting finally, and I might actually remember it this time. Okay, do you have a poison cure? No, you don't. That, but that won't really help. That's fine. Alright, more major healing. Go do another tabula here, and there we go. That's that's all well and good. Really, it's Eshiba here that I need coming in to save the day yet again. Right. Also, the ammonia salts, I friggin' love that animation. Where it's literally just like, I'm gonna drop a boulder on you. <laughs> it's technically salt, we didn't say how much. Yeah, that's an MP killer. Crap. Lady! Dude! I have no healing items. Stop doing that. Alright. Thank you. Thank you, healers, for being so fast. Now, let's keep going this way. With all of these uh, finishers coming in at the same time, like, uh, obviously I'm losing a lot of uh, recovery time while just charging everybody out like this. And they're getting a lot of free hits, but... Basically, as soon as I get a couple of them close, that should be it. So... Is there anything for him to do, really? Not much. Like, he can get close, but odds are he's just gonna do the exact same thing. I guess in theory I can just give him a bit of a short move and hope he moves again. Yep. It's all well and good. And nothing else you can really do to support here. You have a cleanse on you? No, but you do have a heal. Uh, not really worth it for what little bit he's gonna have here. Yeah, poison fades anyway. And it would absolutely be the AI's luck right now if they managed to pull off a, uh, a random dagger bind with that rogue. So if you didn't know, yeah, all daggers have a chance to bind upon hit. So that basically is just the same as don't move. Uh, so yeah, that's, um, I mean, it's already happened three times, since they're apparently having a very, very lucky day. You never know, you never know. Alright. First off, Aegis. Hopefully get him a little bit healed, and maybe we'll see something. Now, how much does this do? 127, and that's at not even max, so what is her total here? So I think, yeah, with, with two finishers... As long as two units can get next to her, we should be alright. Um, I might end up going for something a little bit different, like for example, maybe having having them go after the healers instead. Not the time for that, dude. Not the time for that at all. I don't even know when he got stunned, actually. Alright, check. Please, please, please. Get the hell out of our way. Like really. <laughs> We pulled this whole elaborate plan, and you're all like, no, 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 I'm just gonna stand here. Mm. Alright, yeah, most sensible option just seems to be to cut through her. Yeah, still 0% recruit on that, though. I don't want to go major heal, yes. That. 
go up here, have her face the wall, so that hopefully that rogue will end up moving in and trying to attack her. Perfect. Fortunately, she got that dagger bind, because of course she did. And of course he gets a crit. Oh, god dang, dude. Really now? <laughs> Your guys' luck is redonkulous. Thank you. Thank you for turning that around slightly. And he's gonna hit that? Yeah, for sure. Of course he's gonna hit. Every single crystallize this entire round has hit. I can't help but notice. Next up, what are your odds of just one-shotting these guys? Pretty darn non-existent. What about one of these guys? Not exactly. Hmm. Hmm. I give him a little bit of a boost. We got Rupture, Resilient. Okay, we've got Strength then. Now. Don't have anything to get rid of Bind. So I'm going to have to hope that he survives. So here's the deal. I'm going to do a little bit of a gamble here, so I'm not going to attack anyone. I'm just going to go ahead and drop a Strength in right here. Uh, this should scale up his uh, his damage tremendously. Okay, that's all right. That's perfectly fine. Our healer is gone because ridiculousness. Anyway, so what we're gonna do? I swear, my luck lately has been absurd. Absolutely freaking absurd. Can you knock her into the water or something? Good do that, then. Yeah, between Voltaire and Denim, they can pull this off. So Eshaba is going to go for damage elsewhere. That might distract their healing. What I'm thinking right now is I get Strengthen on Denim. That gives him enough damage from his kill move to be able to one-shot. Um, that should be able to, best-case scenario, one-shot the boss. Worst-case scenario... Like, for example, if, he, if he's next to the boss... Uh, he can go ahead and, you know, use the full damage scaling finisher. That will allow him to one-shot them, um, in theory, and or use uh, Voltaire's attack team. Unfortunately, it does not look like it lined up that way. Did it? 191, no. So, he can go and finish off... Oh, that is some bull crap. He's five health off. Or five, um, five damage off. Alright, is there anyone he can one-shot with us? No, no, and no. Alright, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. We stun. No. I'm gonna go in healer. She's probably gonna go for a crystallize. Alright, she's got her finisher, so hopefully this should stun this guy. Hopefully distract the other healer. Not that I really know what that will accomplish, but whatever. This chick sucks. <laughs> Seriously, screw her. She's here with her knife and shield. No, I'm just gonna prevent this. Just prevent. Let's see. So far, she's almost gotten three units killed because she's got she got the healer killed. Uh, she's almost gotten Eshiva killed, and she's probably getting Voltaire killed next. So yeah, I will say, very uh, very impressive rogue they've got going here. Because this chick is just proven to be friggin' unstoppable. Okay. Please miss. Thank you. Thank you for finally missing. That took ages, but it finally happened. Speaking of ages, how about Aegis? Har har har. be amazing to be able to pull it back from this. Insta-dead. Okay, please tell me you scaled ridiculously. 215. Who can he reach? He can reach this one. That can one-shot them. So 41% chance. Or if I go and attack her, there's lower odds, but he might be able to follow it up. Uh, looks like both healers would be able to get a chance, so yeah, this is the only chance. Okay, well there's one. 
Um, if he gets close to Voltaire, the two can Aegis off each other, and hopefully just plank damage. Um, I still see no proper way of a win, but, you know, it certainly would be a thing to have two, two runs end in a row. Although, it definitely would be fitting as soon as I just said, hey, I'm pretty sure we've won this. <laughs> that's what I get. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's uh, So that's the end of the run right there. Which is fine. He's got very close. Um, but anyway, let's see. Yeah, there's not really anything else he can do. Because even if I go and uh, try to evacuate Denim, that'll just basically end the game right there. So either way, you know, it's been fun. Um, I'll uh, probably do another uh, another attempt at this run. Uh, I'd say in like a week. Something like that. I definitely plan to do this run again because I've gotten farther than this. Um, really wasn't expecting it to end right here. I'm just going to go ahead and chalk it, to, chalk it up to bad luck, actually. Because overall it went pretty darn well. It just kind of came down to the fact that Rogue ended up blocking the entire right side, and then they ended up getting a couple crits, and then they ended up getting crits on both the healers. And But, you know, it would eventually happen anyway. So it's kind of hard to say that that was exactly the deciding factor. But still, that definitely didn't help. So, there's that. So, anyway... Thank you for uh, for showing up to these things, and um, yeah, you know if you you know if there's a different run uh, that somebody wants to see first, I'll go and indulge my principles. Too bad, too bad. Anyway, so if you you know if you have a, a different run you want to see first, uh, do let me know. But uh, thanks for uh, showing up to this thing, and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Take care.